The title of my message today is Eight Highway Signs That Lead to Hell. Eight Highway Signs That Lead to Hell. And uh, often people don't like to hear about hell. There's even a movement now in churches across the United States and that is reaching throughout the world saying that hell doesn't exist, that it's not a real place. There's uh, preachers in large churches that say that hell is just here now, we create it, but then that at the end, when we die, we all go to heaven. And uh, uh, if it was so, why have church? Why should we follow God's laws? Should we reject the word of God that tells us that hell is a real place? By no means. So, uh, as I was preparing to minister the word of God, Really the Holy Spirit impressed me this uh, scripture that is in the book of Revelation. But before we go there, I would like us to start by reading in Matthew chapter 7 verses 13 and 14. And you can follow uh, in your Bible or you can just uh, look at our screen. It says, you can enter God's kingdom only through the narrow gate. The highway to hell is broad and its gate is wide for the many who choose that way. But the gateway to life is very narrow and the road is difficult and only a few ever find it. Now this is a statement or a teaching that was given by the Lord Jesus Christ, God's Son. This is not a new idea. This is the Word of God. And in the Word of God we find secrets that pertain to the spiritual world and as we embrace God's law and we read the teaching of God, we need to understand fully why we are here and where we are going. You know the church, the early church, wasn't known by the word church. They were known by those of the way. So when we read in the book of Acts, this was the name of the early church. It was those that speak about the way or the road. So the road and the way is a very important concept since the beginning of Christianity. We are in a journey and this illustration of the road is used through the New Testament to tell us that we have an origin at birth. We refocus our destination with new birth when we are born again and we embrace the life giving God that sent His only Son, Jesus Christ, to die for us. So when we refocus our life, we enter in this journey, which is a spiritual journey. And our final destination is a place called heaven. And heaven is where we will be with God for all eternity. So when we die here on earth, we know that we have a loving God waiting for us. However, Jesus Christ clearly stated that only a few can find that gate, that road that leads to the gate of life. So the majority of people, the majority of people around us, unfortunately, will not find, will, uh, they will not be able to see this gate. Why is that? Because through life, there's something that is called the journey or the road. And here on verse 13, it says, the highway to hell is broad. It's a large highway. And it says that many will choose that way. Now, let me show you this highway. This is not a Photoshop picture. This is a true highway. Would you like to be this highway? Can you count the lanes? I'm sure you can. But uh, that's hell. So this, well, it's hell to be in that traffic. <laughs> but um, as we go through a highway, and it's a broad highway, there's many, many people that follow that path. Why? Because it's easy. There's nothing you need to do in order to follow the highway to hell. And I'm not talking about an ACDC song. I'm really talking about a spiritual principle that is written in the Word of God that says that there's a broad highway, a broad road, and many, most people will follow this road. 
the end of their lives, the end of the journey, they will arrive to a gate, and it's called the gate of hell. Now, if we make the right choice here on earth, there's an exit to this highway, and there's a difficult road. Jesus said it's a difficult road. Only a few find this road, and this road leads us to the gate, which is the gate of heaven. What is your final destination? This is the question. And as we read about this, of course that we know that us Christians, we believe that we are in the narrow road. But let me tell you that it's not because you're here in this church that you're truly in the narrow road. It's not because you do your prayers or you read your Bible that you are truly in the narrow road. Because the narrow road, it's not just a vague concept. The narrow road represents God's plan for your life and for my life. You might read the Bible, do all things that Christians do, but you're still in the highway. And today, let me tell you, there's an exit. There's an exit to the broad highway. And you can truly be sure that you can find this road, the road to heaven. Now, let's go to the main scripture that I would like to share with you this morning, which is in Revelation chapter 21. Now, the book of Revelation starts by saying that it's the revelation of Jesus Christ to the church. So, the book of Revelation wasn't written to the world, but it was written to the church. There are certain things in scripture that are to be proclaimed to the world. But there are other things that are to be proclaimed to the church. So the spiritual things that we read about in the book of Revelation were addressed to us. And they were given by a vision, a prophetic vision, to uh, John the Apostle that wrote the vision. And now we have this book, the Revelation of Jesus Christ. So as we read this scripture, this is, this is the end of the Bible. This is the end of the book. This is the final destination. Let's see what God told John to tell the church. Revelation 21, 6. God said to me, it is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. To the thirsty, I will give from the spring of the water of life without payment. To the one who conquers, will have this heritage and I will be his God and he will be my son. And now verse 8, but as for the cowardly, the faithless, the detestable, as for murderers, the sexually, the sexually immoral, sorcerers, idolaters, and liars, their portion will be in the lake that burns with fire and sulfur, which is the second death. The lake that burns with fire and sulfur, which is the second death. And to this lake we call hell. Now let me ask you again. Who are the recipients of this letter? Is it the world or the church? Church. Are these people mentioned here in the world or in the church? Now I heard. <laughs> because my, maybe you think, no, no, no. In the church everybody is holy. We don't have this in the church. Listen, God is smarter than us. But we also have intelligence. If this letter was written to the church, it's because inside the church we have people with these attributes, with this kind of defective character that we read in verse 8. And our message today is about this verse. And I don't want it to be a negative message, but I, I would like it to be a, a wake-up call so you'll understand something. Heaven is not for everybody. I was listening years ago when I came to Christ to singer Steve Green that is now in heaven, and he was saying that the fact that you come to church doesn't make you a Christian. As if you go to McDonald's doesn't make you a hamburger. Okay? so. The fact that you're here or that you're a member of the church doesn't mean that you're really in that pathway, the narrow and hard pathway to, to life. 
People like the Broadway. People like the highway. When you do a trip, it's a long trip. You're going to choose the highway. You're not going through the, the side roads. You're not going to take the shortcuts, are you? No, you choose the highway. So the highway is the easy way. I've heard people say, uh, oh, I, I don't want to do anything in the church because I'm so busy. Are you busy? Let me tell you, you're in the highway. And maybe you're offended now because you came to church. And you say, I didn't come to church to be offended. If I don't like the message, I'll go to another church. Of course, if that's your attitude, you're already in the highway. Because when God brings us to a congregation or a church, it's for our own good. It's to tell us, listen, keep focused, keep on track. And as we keep on track, many times we need to be corrected spiritually. In the things of God, we all need a pastor. If you don't have a pastor, you will be lost because there are signs in the highway that will lead you to hell. And if there's no one to tell you, take the exit, don't do this, don't have this attitude, you will be lost and your life, unfortunately, will lead you to a gate which is the wrong gate. Now, let us dissect this verse Revelation 21. And let's see these road signs. The first road sign, or the first thing that is mentioned in this verse that, that will lead you straight to hell, it's mentioned as the cowardly. The cowardly. So, the cowardly are those people that are afraid to share their faith. Listen, this is talking to the church. This is not uh, talking to the world. This is Jesus Christ saying in the church, you have cowards. Cowards are those people that say they gave their life to Christ and then you want to ask them, what is your religion? <coughs> I don't have religion. Um, I have a relationship with God. Because they're cowards to say, I'm a Christian, I'm born again, and I attend to a church there in Greenfield Park called the South Shore Community Church. Then they go to a, a dinner and the Holy Spirit tells them, share the gospel with that person. And they say, oh, what are, they, what are they going to think about me if I share my faith? Maybe they will reject me. I will be rejected. See, the cowardly are those people that neglect to speak the word of God, the word of truth. And this is the reason why we're not reaching our community for Christ. It's because we have a bunch of people in this church that are cowardly. And now I don't hear any amen. Because now you're thinking about this. And you're thinking, am I being a coward? If you are, let me tell you. There's an exit. There's always an exit. You're on this highway. You're running on this highway. Lots of traffic. Lots of people going that direction. But you can convert and exit and say from now on. I proclaim and declare and I tell God from this moment on. I determine that I'm going to share the gospel. I'm going to do your will. I will share who I am. I will not be afraid to tell anyone who I am. What Jesus Christ did for me. What I am in Christ. I will not be ashamed. Amen. Can we give an applause to the Lord again? Praise God. Now the second is the faithless. Do we have faithless people in the church? Yes we do. You see, faith is not a belief. Faith has to do with the way you live. Without faith it is impossible to please God. Faith is when you speak the things that you believe in and you call them into existence. Faith is the substance of things we hope for. We've learned that last week. Faith is the substance of things we hope for. So who is the faithless? The faithless is that negative person that knows that it's written in the Bible that by his stripes we were healed. And someone tells them, you know, Jesus Christ can heal you. They say, oh, I don't really believe he can do that for me. Faithless. Faithless. Those negative people that are always complaining. They don't have a clue about life. Because life in Christ is to live by faith. 
Don't be faithless. When something negative happens in your life, you have to stand in the promises of God. Amen. Know those promises. Read about them in the Bible. Come to church. Learn about those promises. And when the doctor tells you, you're going to die, you're going to say, no, I'm not. Because my God can heal me. Amen. And it's not your uh, counsel, it's not your verdict that it's going to die, uh, dictate if I'm going to die or not. It's up with God. If it's my time, it is. I'm ready. But I believe that by His stripes, I am healed. Amen. Amen. Can you give it a applause to the Lord? So can add it. Now, the detestable. Who's the detestable? You know people that are detestable. <laughs> you want to stay away from them? The detestable are those people that, you know, they speak hate about everything. Listen, this is not talking about the detestable outside the church, the detestable in church. Who's the detestable in church? Uh, those that always criticize the pastors and the leaders and everybody. They criticize everyone that does anything, but they don't do anything for the Lord. The only thing they do is warm up their sin. The only thing, ministry of making number, the detestable are those that hate their brothers and sisters. And they show that, hey, by constantly criticizing, the testable people are not pleasant to be around. And if you join that gang, you become one of them. Learn how to be loving, not detestable. <laughs> not the problem. Number four, the murderers. Oh, you might think, no, this one, it's, it's not for me because I never killed anyone. You know what the, the Bible says? The Bible says you kill people with your words. The Bible says if you hate your brother, you're a murderer. If you hate your brother, you're a murderer. Have you ever uh, tried to, to just allow the Holy Spirit to move in your life so that you can walk in forgiveness? You need to forgive people around you. Some people, they they just carry the burden of offense all the time. They're offended. They're offended because this person didn't, didn't say hi. They're offended because they were sick and nobody called, but they didn't tell anyone that they were sick. They're offended by so many little things. They're offended when the pastor preaches a message about fire and brimstone like today. <laughs> They're offended for all these little things. And offense that leads to hate. There's a root of bitterness. They speak words of hate. Murderers. Wow. Do we have murderers in the church? Yes, we have. But listen, there's an exit. There's an exit to heaven. Number five, the sexually immoral. And you can say, oh, that we don't have in the church. Maybe they're hiding. There's always an exit. Sexual immorality is, I'm going to mention a few things. Fornication, which is sex before marriage. That's sexual immorality. It's not me who says it's the Bible. Homosexuality. You know, the world can say it's okay. And it's, if it's okay for the world, fine, it's okay for the world. In the church, it's not okay. Why? Because we have the Word of God that tells us it's not okay. So if you make your choice, make your choice. But there's always an act. Pornography, incest, rape, all these things, sometimes they happen in churches. Lately, there's a strain that is, has been happening in the Roman Catholic Church. And everybody points the finger. Why? Because they want to diminish what the Lord is doing also in the Roman Catholic Church. Because God is at work in all churches, including the Roman Catholic Church. There are our brothers and sisters in the Lord. They have a different doctrine. They have certain things in, in which they're lost. However, the world targets the Roman Catholic Church as if every priest is a rapist and a child molester. And that's not true. I know many men of God that are priests. They make their choice. I feel for them. Because we should serve the Lord, following the Bible, and not 
uh, the, the rules of an organization like they do. So they should go back to the Bible. I feel for them. But they're men and there's women of God. Not every priest is a child molester. But the news, they tell, they bombard us with these things. They never tell about the good things that the church is doing around the world. Only the bad things matter. Sexual immorality. The world is impregnated with sexual immorality. Gay marriage, they speak so much about it, it's normal. Listen to me, I couldn't care the less if they get married. I couldn't care the less. But what bothers me is that the same people that are against marriage are the ones who defend now gay marriage. That's a contradiction. Why? Because they want to target the values of Christians, the values of Jews, the values of our culture that follow the word of God. Sexual immorality should be the church. A church that ordains gay ministers shouldn't be called a church. If in the world they want to do it, okay, it's the world. It's the broad road. We shouldn't be surprised. But in the church, this cannot happen. Okay, let's continue. We're in our highway. There's so many exits. Now the sorcerers. Now you might say, there's no sorcerers in church. Sorcery or witchcraft. Sorcery or witchcraft, it's a word that talks about manipulating people for our own good. And let me tell you, I gave a teaching here about charis charismatic witchcraft. In which people, using the word of God, they twist the word of God to manipulate the lives of others. And tell them, you, you, you can do this, you cannot do that. Can do. In Christ we have freedom. Church leaders are not here to tell you what you should do or you, what you shouldn't under pressure. But we should speak the word of God and then you make our own decision. And we give you counsel. But whenever someone starts to say, you know, you cannot do this because the word of God is and that for their own interest, this is sorcery, this is witchcraft. This is witchcraft. Let me tell you a form of witchcraft. And you're not going to like this. But this happens in churches. A person is a member of a church. Suddenly, they don't like something that is happening in the church. So they say, I'm not giving my offerings anymore. And I'm going to tell everyone not to give offerings to this church. You know that sorcery? It is. Because not only you're in sin, you're robbing God. But now you're an influence in the lives of others. You're a sorcerer and the witch rather, or you know, this is the name that the Bible calls to people that use their influence to mislead people in a different direction. Do they happen in the church? Yes, we do. That's why Jesus Christ that knows these things talks about it in this Bible verse. The idolaters. Now, an idolater, we might think, well, those, those, that, those that pray to images. Well, that's a form of idolatry. But an idol is anything or anyone who is in between you and God. When someone tells, like they told Jesus Christ, I cannot go with you because, you know, I have to sell a property. I cannot go with you because I bought uh, some oxen and I need to check the, the condition of my cows. Or uh, they told Jesus Christ, I cannot go where you call me uh, because I need to bury my father. Or uh, Jesus Christ said, you know, give everything you have to the poor and follow me and you'll have a treasure in heaven. They say, oh no, I cannot do this. Those are all forms of idolatry. See, idolatry, it's not only when we worship an idol. Idolatry, it's when we place someone in the place where God should be. And that can be yourself. This person can be yourself. You can, uh, uh, the idol can be you. When you say, I don't have time for God because I want to do this, because this makes me feel good. You know, those are idols and the idolaters will not go to heaven. And finally, the eighth thing, the liars. Now there's two kinds of lies. Of lies. There's the lies you tell others and there's the lies that you tell yourself. Okay? Let's see if we are on the same page. There's lies 
that you can tell to others, and there's lies that you tell yourself. Is there a difference? No, they're both lies. Certain people tell lies to others, and then they convince themselves that it's the truth. Have you ever met people like this? Are you one of these? You told a lie, and you told it so many times, that now you're convinced that that lie is the truth. Hmm? I know so many people like this, and you can tell me they're not in the church as they are. If they were, Jesus Christ wouldn't finish the most important final chapter of the Bible, where he says clearly, here's heaven, here's hell. Here's heaven, eternal life. Here's hell, second death. Why does he call it second death? Because all people will be brought to the presence of God and some will die a second time. First, they die in the natural. Second death is in the spirit. First death, their body dies. They go to the presence of God, but they're in the gate of hell. So after the judgment seat of Christ, they will die for a second time. You know, Jesus Christ defined himself as the truth. What is the truth? You know, the, the truth shall set you free. So if you're a liar, an idolater, a testable, all these things, let me tell you, there's an exit. And now we're going to go to the end of this message. It's time to exit that highway to hell. If there's things in your life that are not straight, let me tell you, Today, you might die. Can't you? Sometimes people are in the church, the roof falls. Don't be worried. Don't worry because you know, this is pretty solid. But if there's a earthquake, something happens. You don't know what's going to happen. There's freak accidents. People die every day. And today, it might be your day or my day. We don't know. We don't like to speak about this thing. But when you determine in your heart, now it's the time to exit from this. And you do something which is called conversion. To convert, it's to change way. You're going on the way, on the highway to hell, but now you decide to exit the highway. And there are some road signs. And when you exit the highway, you do the right decision. Let me tell you what Jesus Christ said in Matthew chapter 12, verses 36 and 37. He said, I tell you, on the day of judgment, people will give account for every careless word they speak. For by your words, you will be justified, and by your words, you will be condemned. So, have no fear of them, for nothing is covered that will not be revealed, or hidden, or hidden that will not be known. So, imagine that now I, I will have a conversation with you and I will turn on a recorder to record our conversation. Does that make a difference? Now you're looking at me. <laughs> you know, certain times, certain meetings I have, if I think it's a very important meeting, I tell the, the people that are in the meeting, you know, we'll, we'll, uh, won't you mind that I record this conversation? I ask first. Actually, Canadian law tells me that I need to do it. So I follow the law. And uh, if they say yes, I press recorder and I put the record on the table or somewhere. Why do I do this? Because it's an important conversation. I want to make sure that people are aware that their words will be remembered. Now let me tell you this. God has a recorder that is always on. Wow. Do you mean that God listens to my swear words? Yes, He does. Do you mean that God listens when I'm angry and I have outbursts of anger? Yes, He does. I'm not talking about Big Brother. <laughs> this is not conspiracy. It's not Big Brother watching you, but God is watching you. Every single word the Bible says. 
See why, you know, sometimes I'm talking with someone and they want to back up what they say. They say, God is my witness about this. No, you don't need to say that. That's evil. Jesus Christ said, may your uh, speech, what you say, may be yes or no. So if, if you say something, if you do a statement, listen to this, God listens. And one day, the Bible says, we will be judged. When, when is this day happening? Listen, we arrive to the gate. I hope we all arrive to the gate of heaven. Is this the gate you want to arrive? arrive? Is this your final destination? Because if it isn't, you came to the wrong place. If your final destination is hell, you don't need to come to church. Skip church. Why should you? But now if you're here, if you're on a journey, make sure you don't go back to the highway by your actions, attitudes, things you say, attitudes that are not compatible with the Christian life that God called you to. So make sure you keep track of things and you need someone to tell you once in a while or sometimes, brother, sister, I don't think what you're doing is right. And we can exit the highway. God's recorder is there. Now let me finish. I'm not going to read the scripture, but I'm going just to pass it there. But Jesus talked about two men that went to the temple and they were praying. One was a Pharisee, another was a tax collector. And the Pharisee did a long prayer just saying, God, God, I thank you. I'm not like these people. You know, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm not an adulterer. I'm not unjust. I'm, I don't have the, the eight road signs that there are mentioned over there in the book of Revelation. And I fast and I give tithes, so I, I give offerings. But the tax collector, he just said, Lord, have mercy on me. I am a sinner. So Jesus Christ, at the end of this story, uh, said, you know what? One went home justified, but the other one, his prayer, was useless. You see, some people have these prayers, oh, hallelujah, oh, Lord of heaven, and this, and they pray for all things. But they neglect the most important thing, which is humbleness before the Lord. Which is saying, God, I'm not perfect. Some people, they think they're so perfect. They don't even need a pastor. They pastor themselves. Why should they go to a church? Church is wherever I want, you know. God brought you here because He loves you. And God brought you here to hear this message today because He loves you. And maybe you are sure that you're in the pathway, the hard road that leads to the gate of heaven. But today as you listen to this message, the Holy Spirit is showing you there's a few things that you still have to change in your life. Because it's not if you do all those eight things, one is enough. One is enough to take you to the Broadway. And today, I, I want to tell you, if we confess our sins, we have a God who is faithful and just to forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us all stand. Let's finish with a word of prayer. Let's give an applause to the Lord. Praise God. Amen. So when you're on the highway, remember, there's an exit. First time I went to Germany, I was so happy. I had a really fast car and I was driving on the autobahn, 180, 200 kilometers per hour. I was really glad, I was excited. It was my first time in the autobahn and that those days there, were no, there was no speed limit. That was 200 and the Porsche will pass at three, almost 300. It was unbelievable. Unbelievable. Great experience. I felt so good. No problems with radar, nothing. I could drive all speed. And then I, I passed by a town, the town of Ausgang. And, uh, and I, I was checking, there was no GPS, I was checking the map. And I asked the person next to me, do you see this town? No, Ausgang. So we drove 20 kilometers, Ausgang again. I said, wow, this is a really big city. And then again, Ausgang. And finally, I stopped in the gas station. And uh, I, I asked someone in English, can you tell me, where's this town of Ausgang? And they were laughing. They told me, Ausgang means exit. <laughs> <laughs> and I thought, ooh, I made a fool out of myself. 
Exit, so there's no city called Ausgang, it's exit in German. So different from exit in French or something in French. So uh, then I learned when I, when each time I go on, on the high, that highway, I still laugh to myself. It's a good thing when we, we laugh to ourselves. <laughs> you know? <laughs> now, listen, if you're in sin, you can laugh to yourself as you exit. As you exit this highway to hell, and you determine, God, no matter how hard it is, I'm determined to get to the gate. At the end, there's a pearly gate. News for you, it's not St. Peter that is there. It's Jesus Christ himself. He said, I am the door of the sheep. The, the, of the sheep. So he's the door of the sheep. So as we go to, to the gate, we arrive, and Jesus Christ is right there waiting for us in person. That's how, much, how important you are. It's not a disciple. It's not an angel. Angels will get you there. And Jesus Christ is right there. And you know what? We will feel so ashamed of ourselves. So ashamed of what we did. So ashamed of what we've said. But there's something in our heart that still tells us you were justified. Because you knew that if we confess our sins, He's faithful and just to forgive our sins and forgive us from all unrighteousness. So it doesn't matter if you were a murderer, if you were an adulterer, if you watched pornography, if you were a homosexual. It doesn't matter the problem that you have in your life. When it gets to the point that you say, I'm done. Next exit, I'm done. Exit. The exit is now and it's today. And I want to challenge you before we leave this place to do a short prayer where you tell God, God, I want to exit this highway. And I know you said it's a narrow way, it's hard, there's hardships, it's not going to be easy. But there's a prize at the end. There's a gate. I want to get to the gate. Amen.